as a dancer, I'm so used to uh, non-verbal uh, communication uh, that uh, to speak, I will be needing my notes throughout, so I'll just put my slides a little bit. It's going to be so different from the talk that we just had, so... Uh, I just come from the other spectrum and such a pleasure to be with you all today to share my journey on dance and music and yoga and spirituality. There's also my understanding on how the relevance of arts in our day-to-day -day lives. I started learning dance at the age of eight, and by the time I was 15, when, you know, most of my friends were debating whether to take arts or science in the next class, I'd already decided what I was going to do, and that was to dance for the rest of my life. But then with dance, I've also been closely associated with yoga since childhood. My first experience was with Nad and Bhakti Yoga, which is basically the yoga of divine sounds and the yoga of devotion. When I was about 10 years old, I was left devastated with the passing of my house that I had not eaten for days. So someone advised my mother to take me to the local yoga show that had opened recently in my town. When we arrived, the Kirtan session was about to start. So the Acharya, Swami Surupan and Saraswati Ji, asked my mother to seat me there and that she would, <laughs> and would see me after the session. After one hour of listening to the devotional music, there was a visible change in my mood. I was taken back the next day and felt completely at peace after the second session. Growing up, Hachi became a big part of my daily routine because I always felt a certain lack of energy, which is such a drawback for a dancer. So, Karan or yoga breathing helped me with that. I also suffered from the most debilitating fear of the stage. And for that, I practiced charter and own chanting, and a lot of that was happening today as well. But as life's experiences unfolded, I went into the deeper spiritual aspects of yoga. I participated in Vedic Lagyas, lived among sannyasis from time to time, and performed seva, which from Vedic Lagyas and rituals. I wanted to share that with the community through an interesting medium, which was dance. We also produced a dance on chakras and the theory of evolution according to yoga. Here there was a very important social message. We have to transcend your lower qualities. Because yoga says that a person thinks and acts according to the stage of evolution, which is indicated by a particular chakra or energy point in our body. Simply put, a person vibrating at the lower chakras will exhibit negative qualities, and a person in higher chakras will exhibit positive qualities. So the dance opened with the manifestations of the lower chakras through the unfortunate Nirbhaya incident. The perpetrators acted that brutally because that was the outcome of the state of evolution. Then we showed the higher chakras through the historical characters of Mirabai and the Roman Christian martyr, Saint Paraskevi who were both full of such compassion and love and forgiveness in spite of great cruelty done to them. And the process of evolution from the lower to the higher chakras was shown through the transformation of King Ashok. We all know that he was such a cruel and sensual man that later became a Buddhist after the Telinga War. Our message was that punishment doesn't help and hasn't helped. For a peaceful society, the individual must 
evolve and become a better human being by shedding any spiritual path. And I could dance very close to my heart as a dancer, so I'll speak that I'd love to share with you if you haven't said talk already. I just received Mantra Diksha at that time. It's a tradition where your spiritual guru gives you a personal mantra after gauging a disciple's personality so that to improve the quality of our thoughts because it's our thoughts that create our action and therefore our destiny. And mantras work at the vibrational level. And the effect of mantras on our body and mind is a very recent subject. Gayatri Mantra, for instance, has been observed to have such positive effect on our mood, anxiety, concentration, and general mental health. And I found that as my inner world improved, so did my external, my relationships got better, I became successful in my career, and life gradually became more fulfilling. Allow me to describe a scene from the dance for you. An act showed a conversation between two friends. One girl tells the other, Bhu Sundara, Rima Sundara, Pushpa Sundara, Sundara Ambara. Meaning, how beautiful the earth is, how gorgeous the sky is. How beautiful the flowers are, and how beautiful the horizon is. And if you note, the words such as Sundara, Anvara, ends with Ram, a mantra that according to yogis, stimulates our digestive health. So through a normal conversation spoken in Sanskrit, we are in effect improving our health. And because these subjects such as healing languages, healing lifestyles, social peace, personal harmony are human issues, we collaborated with international artists such as ballet dancers from Romania, opera artists from Italy, contemporary and Broadway dancers from the United States to give the presentations a global flavor. And as I was getting deeper into dance and yoga simultaneously, this thing is troubling me no end today. Oh my goodness. There it goes. The similar, similar inner experiences from both yoga and dance led me to be very curious about the functioning of dance. Because yoga is in my brain. It's a very research subject that there's very little research on how this impacts the body, mind, and soul the way it does. So I applied for and was awarded the Senior Fellowship at the Ministry of Culture to research into the deeper significance of Odyssey. And I found that Odyssey is a synthesis of different yogas. For instance, many Odyssey postures are just like yogasans. To give you one or two examples, Bhujava Chipatak Karana, which is the Shiva pose and dance, which we show like this. is Tandavasana Yoga, which is practiced to strengthen our nervous system. Now, Krishna is pose in Odyssey, which is most of you must have seen in sculptures and paintings, and we use it a lot in Odyssey dance. It's called Natvarasana in Yoga, which is practiced to treat fear and phobias. Another part of Odyssey dance, which is like this, There's a most of Gorakasana of yoga, which is practiced to attain meditative states. Oh. Besides making the legs very <laughs> supple, of course. <clears throat> oh. Not a very good day for me. So, the hand mudras of Odyssey are also yogic. For instance, the Tata Mudra of Odyssey, which is used to depict. Grace, water, forest, and the self is known as Abhay Mudra in yoga and is practiced for fearlessness, as the name suggests. 
Aksa Samudran Odyssey Dance, which is used to depict beauty, time, writing, among others. This name is Grand Madhya Yoga and is practiced for mental concentration. The Odyssey versus the Raga system of musical pattern, which is a part of Rag Kikitsa, and then should Ayurvedic system of music therapy, also based on Nadia. For instance, Rag Darbari works as a sedative, Rag Tori reduces anxiety, and it has been found that just 30 minutes of listening to Raga music every day can reduce your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Then the meditative aspect. Odyssey uses symbols and gods, goddesses for that. Also, the aim of both Odyssey and yoga is moksh, which is sustained transcendence, a most joyful state according to yogis. And dances to the three themes of that state, I must tell you that. Also, in my research work, I found that across the world, the same mind body principles are expressed in arts. Trans states have been documented in many dances across the world. Yes, dance impacts the individual, that is clear, but can dance impact the society, lead us towards some social development? Absolutely. Research has found that dark nature therapy is effective in reducing aggressive behaviors in school children in just 12 weeks' time. And I have personally experienced the power of arts in my experiences in Rikya Pit Ashram. So Mr. Tananji had asked me to teach dance to the boys of the local community that the ashram had adopted. So it's one of the most underdeveloped regions of India and Swami is what uplift them in various ways. When I began teaching them in 2018, I felt timid, depressed and underconfident. But I found gradually they became very self-confident, energetic, expressive, and they turned to become very productive members of their family and community. Of course, this was an expanse of methods that Swamiji was using, but that dance too can be a method of personal and social transformation I experienced because of this great yogi's vision. I conclude by saying that we need to include arts in our daily life for our emotional, physical, mental, psychological, and spiritual health. And we don't have to take up a lot of time for this. Data suggests that just one hour of musical practice per week plus 30 minutes of exercise daily can be beneficial. Even watching a dance or music program can help you. Studies indicate that those who watch live performances live long. And you can pick an art form that you are drawn to. Do the Latin Zumba because it improves mental skills. Practice Tai Chi because that will reduce blood pressure. Do some group drumming because that uh, eases anxiety. Or just listen to the flute music from your, uh, you know, way back from college or work or whatever, because that induces the relaxing alpha waves. Or do some Odyssey lessons because that processes trauma, which I can vouch for. So whatever vocation you are in or whatever you are in your life, whether you're a student or homemaker or whatever, include arts in your daily life to make it more enriching. Because if we want to function at an optimum level and we want to achieve all that we desire, we need our material and spiritual, our inner and outer world to be in balance and harmony. So, thank you so much for listening to me and expectations. Namaste.